This video will cover a lot of recent nuclear tech mod updates including the transport drones, logistic drones, powered condensers, the arc welding machine which is important for progression and also the concrete cracker missiles and the nasty things it can do to concrete. So without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. 13 this video with the arc welder cause it is required for progression. You can get this machine early on using a tier 2 steel anvil using the following crafting recipe as you can see on your screen here. Now primarily this machine is used to combine cast plates into their welded variants but it can also process other recipes. So you can combine up to 3 items and a fluid in this machine. It can take power and speed saving upgrades and here are all of the recipes that it can process. So as you can see there are a lot of different things but mainly you will be using this for the welded plates. Now welded plates are important because they are used in like even the most basic forms of progression. So for example the welded iron plate will be used to make a diesel generator. This becomes even more important when we are talking about the welded steel plate. By the way the arc welder has a really cool animation when it's working and here, here you can see all of the different things which require the welded steel plate. So yeah this machine is going to be important moving on. Now you can supply fluid like for example liquid oxygen using the fluid ducts and any plate which requires this fluid will now take this and the machine will start running. So the power consumption is given in the recipe step here. So that's the arc welder, a great machine and an important one at it. Next up we come to the telex machine. Now this one is used for communication. It doesn't require any power or redstone. The top portion is the sending portion the bottom one is the receiving portion and we need to set frequencies here. So we have a sending frequency of 1, a receiving frequency of 2. Here we are going to do the opposite, sending frequency 2, receiving frequency 1. So now we can send and receive messages using this machine. So for example, if I type here hello there and if I press the send button, then this message will be sent on frequency 2 and any machine which is on the receiving end of frequency 2 will receive this message. So this works with multiple machines as well. So you can connect all of your bases if you are playing on a server and it works vice versa as well. Now you can also add like commands for example that ring a bell when the message is sent or print this message when the message is received on the other machine. So here for example I am going to ring a bell and print the message that a Vuna base has been located and we are going to attack that base. So as you heard a bell rung and now we have printed that message and you can read the message right here. And as I told you it works on multiple machines so yeah you can connect multiple bases with it. Coming to drones now, there are a total of two types, the transport drones and logistic drones. Let's start with transport drones. To use them, you will need the transport drone grid. This can be set to input output mode and it can transfer fluids and items. Now in order to link these grids, we will need something called the transport drone linker. And these need to be linked in order. So first right click the output grid, then we will secondly right click the input grid in order to make a waypoint here. And then once again to close the loop, right click on the output grid. And this will make a closed loop where the drone can travel. So in this output grid, I'm going to place some items and now we manually need to place the drone on top of it. Now drones come in four variants, the transport drones. There are the normal transport drone, the express one, which is very fast and the chunk loading variant for both of these. Now chunk loading variants are important because these drones can travel like very far away. So they will need to load chunks. But for now, as the distance is very short, I'm going to use the normal one. Shift right click on the grid and the drone will take all of the content of the output grid and deposit it into the input one like this. So here as you can see we have deposited all of the items and this drone will continue this loop like forever. So yeah that's the basics of the transport drone and it will work perfectly until and unless there is no obstacle in its way. And it can as I told you it can also transfer items and fluid. So let's set up a system for fluid transfer using the express drone. The process will be the same. We set one grid for output, the other one for input and this can be connected to any fluid ducts. So you can connect conveyor lines and fluid ducts in order to transfer items and fluids in and out of these grids. And once that's done, don't forget to close the loop like this, but we messed something up because the cargo drone is now coming to transfer its item to the fluid grid. Now why is that? That's because the transport drone linker needs to be cleared of its previous positions before linking something new or linking a new path. 
So shift right click the transport drone linker to clear its previous position. So for example, I have set the position of the item grid. Now I have cleared these positions and now I'm gonna set the fluid one and clear it once again in order to basically set up a new position. So this way you will not mess up. So don't forget to clear the positions all the time using the transport drone linker. Now, as I told you, these drones will work perfectly until and unless there is an obstacle in the way. For obstacles, we have something called waypoints. Now, these waypoints will tell the drone where to go rather than going in a straight line from crate to crate. So, in order to set a waypoint around this obstacle here, I'm going to use two of these waypoints around it. Because if you use only a single one, then it won't really work. So, now linking these in order and going back. To the output crate we have set the drones and now if i place an item and the crate there goes our drone it will transfer the items and go back to the output crate like this so you can adjust the height by the way by right clicking or shift right clicking right clicking will increase the height shift right clicking will decrease and once you have done that you will once again need to update or link this using the transport drone linker in order to update it and yeah the drone will then follow the new path Logistic drones are a little bit different than the normal drone. For that, you will need the logistics drone dock. It will work as the central point and it will connect to requesters and providers. So these will automatically detect what the requesters need. And if the providers have those items, mm. then a drone will fly from the dock. It will go to the provider, pick up the items and deposit them to the requester. So this is a good way to automate any setup that you have. So if I place a drone, a logistic drone, then it will fly from the provider to the requester. It will wait for five seconds and once again detect that it can deposit something and it will deposit a stack of all of the items that we have set a filter for. So you can increase the range by the way, cause the dock will only detect anything like if it is less than 24 blocks. This range can be increased using waypoint. Coming up next, we have the power condenser. Before that, let's take a look at the rates of processing for the normal condenser, auxiliary, and the large cooling tower 2000, 20,000, and 200,000. So, the maximum rate at which the power condenser can process low pressure steam is 2 million millibuckets per second or 2 mega millibuckets per second and it will consume power in order to do this. Now this is perfect for compact setups, but only where, like where you are producing a lot of power, something like hundreds of mega HGs per second. Because if you're producing like very less power, then first things first, the internal buffer for this is pretty big, 10 million HG per. So yeah, it's gonna take time to charge. But if you have big setups, like for example, the RBMKP, which produced hundreds of mega HG per second, then you can use the powered condenser in order to condense all of your steam. And next up, we have the fuller. So for that, you will need fine suit, which will gather in the ash bed. Now fine suit when in the mixer combined with high performance solvent will give fuller in solution. And fuller in a silex under ultraviolet rays will give proper fuller in. Now fullerene in an acidizer combined with BTX will give us crystalline fullerite and this is used to craft the FENSU. So that's the crystalline fullerite and finally we come to concrete and the concrete bricks. So here I have all of the concrete cracking missiles, the enhanced bunker buster, the concrete cracker, normal bunker buster and a custom missile with the bunker buster warhead. So as you know concrete recently was nerfed, like its blast resistance was taken down by quite a bit. As you can see, concrete bricks now only have a blast resistance of 96. Concrete has like something like 84. So concrete cracking missiles or bunker buster missiles can now get rid of all of these things. So for example, here I have a 30 high tower of concrete bricks above this villager house, but that didn't really save the house. And a second missile will seal the deal completely bam like 
So concrete and concrete bricks won't really help much now against bunker buster missiles. Dukrit on the other hand will, cause Dukrit still has a lot of blast resistance and it takes a nuke to get through it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Peace out and stay safe.